Hey friends, Michelle here at the intersection of pedagogy and technology. And today I want to take a look at just a real quick win out of ChatGPT. So before I begin, the term quick win is a term that I pulled out of the literature. It's a 2023 article written by Jin Hee Kim titled Leading Teacher's Perspective on Teacher AI Collaboration in Education. So today, I want to give you an example of a quick win that we can do in ChatGPT. I'm going to separate it into two parts. We're going to start with doing some differentiation for reading level, and then we are going to have it construct us an image as well. So I am using the paid version of ChatGPT for the second part, and we will get to that. The first part can be done with free ChatGPT, super easy, super quick, an incredible tool for teachers. The second part, we're gonna to have to use the paid part of ChatGPT for. So what I want to do is I wanna take a piece of writing and I'm gonna choose this Wikipedia article on the Iroquois Nation, because that's in our social studies curriculum here in Alberta at the moment. I'm not sure if it's going to stay as new curriculum rolls out or not, but for today it is. And if you look at this, and I know I'm using Wikipedia here, and that's a whole different conversation. We can talk about Wikipedia another day. But what I want to do is I want to take this text, and we're just going to imagine for a moment that I'm teaching grade six, but I've got a couple of students who are really reading at more of a grade three level. So we're going to use ChatGPT because it's free, and we're just going to ask ChatGPT to rewrite this at a grade three level. And then we're going to just sit back and we're going to let it do it. It's going to ignore all of those little numeric citations that were contained in there. It's part of why I use Wikipedia for this demonstration. But you can see that it takes it from being something really, really overwhelming to being something that's become quite readable. Now, as kids make their way through the school years, they become aware of the fact that they struggle with reading or that they don't like reading. That's how lots of them will express it. Often when you hear a child talk about how they don't like reading, what they're really telling you is reading is hard for them. So this is a tool that can be used by students to scale down the reading as well. So let's just imagine that instead of me doing this as a teacher, that I've done it as a student. Now I recognize that my instructions to write it at a grade three level is probably not what a student would write. So let's try a different prompt for the same kind of thing. So I'm pasting the same text, but instead of instructing at the specific reading level, I just said make it easier to read. So let's see what that gives us. It's probably going to be fairly similar to what we saw above might be a little bit more complex because we've not specified, but I think it looks pretty similar. Okay, so let's just scroll up and see. I feel like it's very, very similar. So if I'm a student and I've, I've asked it to make this easier to read and I'm still finding this hard to read, this is the cool part about ChatGPT is it really is kind of a chat. So I could say, make it even easier. And now it's going to scale it down a little bit more. So our kids who really struggle with reading and who would benefit from this kind of a tool, I think it's a great use of ChatGPT. Now I am gonna mention again, that when we're using these tools, we have to be aware of privacy policies. And I believe, I've not checked, so don't quote me on this, I believe ChatGPT says 13. So for a grade six kid, they're not quite old enough, so they still need you to do this. But once we kind of hit that grade seven and they've turned into that 13 year old teenager, this becomes a tool that is free. I would want their parents to be aware of them using it, but it's really a powerful tool for children and adults who 
struggle with literacy. So now what I'd like it to do is I'd like it to make a doodle note image for me from this content. Let's see what it generates. Now this is where we have to have the paid chat GPT. Chat GPT 3 and 3.5 will not construct image from text. Canva will. And I just did a tutorial on that. Canva is free for educators. So if you don't want to be paying for the GPT-4, head on over to Canva and you might have to give it a few more words, but you could have it create an image as well. So let's try and have it create some doodle notes here for us. So I'm again going to instruct it that I want this at a grade three level and I want a doodle note image. Let's see what we get. It's going to need a moment to create the image. Unlike some of the other image generators, it's not going to give me four images to select from. It's just going to give me one. But let's see what we get. Let's see if we like it. If we don't, we can have it do it again. Okay, that's simple and I, and I like it. I am going to skip over and show you one that it did for me earlier when I was testing this out. Let's take a quick peek. And so there's the doodle note that it came up with previously. So we can regenerate and try some different wording and some different ways of phrasing it to try to get what we want. But it's really a profoundly powerful tool. Now, if I want it to regenerate, I can just click that little refresh button and it'll do it again for me. Okay, this is, this is neat. Some of the text on there I would need to verify. Again, it goes back to the idea that AI can make mistakes. So some of these words as I look in here, I would need to check if that is accurate or if that's just something that the AI made up. It'd be really easy to just in a Google drawing or in Canva to cover over some of those words and replace them or we can have it regenerate again and I could tell it to do it without any words on it, which maybe defeats a doodle note. But if I wanted students to fill it in, I could ask for it to make those blank. So let's have it do another one with blank spaces for the words. And I don't know what I'm going to get for this. This is a, uh, real-time experiment, so let's see what it comes up with. The tools are remarkable, and they're getting better every day, but they don't always hit it out of the park. Oh, this is getting there. I really like this, and so I can right-click, and I can save that image just like you do with any other image and I can bring it into a Google Doc or a Google Drawing, I can bring it over to Canva, I can do whatever I need to do with it. And here's the beauty. It was generated by AI. So who owns the copyright? It's one of those topics that's up for discussion these days. I'm not entirely sure where it's all going to go. But as of right now, that's free for me to use. ChatGPT generated that for me. So I'm really excited about this little quick win. The things we can come up with for our classroom, it's inspiring, it's fun, it's exciting, it's innovative. And we're only just coming out of the start gates with this. This stuff is new to all of us. Nobody's an expert yet. So let's just all jump on board. Let's have some fun. Let's play. And let's get some quick wins for our classrooms. So that's today's quick win. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.